Another form of bioenergy is biogas, which refers to the gas produced by organic matter in the absence of oxygen. This organic matter can even be manure or sewage and municipal waste. The gas produced from this material can be utilized in household cooking or even electricity production through power plants, thus replacing firewood and fossil fuels. For the rural areas of Pakistan, this becomes a viable option. Most of the people living in villages own cows and buffaloes which produce enough manure that can operate a small biogas plant. Pakistan Council of Renewable Energy Technologies started working on biogas in the early 70s by installing about 4,000 biogas plants throughout the villages of Pakistan. Now, the budget of cylinder is about 1,100 cylinder. In our month, there were 2-3 cylinders. Now, there is no cost. We are just adding a lot of gas. Since cow manure is known as gober, biogas is also called gober gas by these villagers. The working of a biogas plant is not that complicated. It's actually these cows and buffaloes that provide the basic input for a biogas unit. And I've been told that around four to five cows produce an approximate of 80 kilograms of cow dung in a day. And this cow dung is brought in over here it is mixed with water and then this mixture is fed in to this unit which is the actual biogas producing unit. Now I've been told that it takes around 15 days for one input of cow dung to produce gases. When the gases are produced they are transported via these pipes into the stoves of these houses and after the extraction of gases the residual cow dung comes out from this place, it is then used as a fertilizer and another special output of this process is the bio water which you can see over there, the green water. It is used for fumigation purposes. The process is simple but it's very smelly but I guess I can survive. PCRET installed these plants on 50% cost-sharing basis, which can prove to be a successful model if government wants to spread this idea among other villages of Pakistan too. One year ago, there was about 35-40 thousand rupees. I was given 18,000 rupees to the rest of the rest. We put it in my pocket. The odorless and smokeless gas produced by the biogas plant is used easily for cooking without any hassle. वैसे लकड़ जो हम जलाते थे 10-15-20 मिनट लग जाते थे अभी फौरन 5 मिनट में चाय पक जाती है खाना तैयार हो जाता है। If five animals can provide enough gas for one house, what if there are hundreds of them or thousands of them or hundreds of thousands of them? And this is it, the cattle colony of Karachi. They call it Bhens Colony. This colony was established in 1958 and according to an estimated number, there are around 400,000 animals present at one given time in this colony. They come in all sizes. Look at this one. The size, it's huge. All sorts of colors. Look at this one. It's beautiful. All shapes, you name it, they have it. You can imagine how much dung these animals produce. This place can be considered a heaven for biogas. This place caught the eye of the city government. They started a biogas project here, which was financed by New Zealand Aid. The cost of the project was approximated to be 135 million US dollars. On July 24, 2006, the mayor of Karachi inaugurated the project. 4,000 acres of land was allocated for the project, which could produce enough gas to run eight CNG stations or to generate 30 megawatts electricity in the energy-hungry city. In addition, it would also provide 15 tons fertilizer per day. In his inaugural speech, he mentioned that the first phase of the project will be operational in just a matter of six months' time. Those six months have not passed yet. 
You know, these people from New Zealand, they had started this, but again, local problems. Like? I mean, I'm, you know, since I'm not political, they were not uh, were able to uh, get the land in the real sense of the word. Though we had an inauguration, I was there myself. Atco International Incorporate, a company based in Texas, also started to work on this enormous potential of cattle colony. Their story was not different. The red tape, you know, the red tape and the procedures are so sticky. See, for example, if the, uh, Nazim gives an order, okay, I want to set up a biogas plant with this party, I have to go to DDO, the EDOs, and all those departments, the law department. They take up into brickers, the files are moving from one place to another. It takes such a long time, and they're calling us again and again, again and again, and they're wasting our time. We get fed up, and then we go back. Apart from manure, other waste is also produced by cities. One can easily spot young Afghan children collecting material from city waste for God knows whom. According to an estimate, the city of Karachi produces about 9,000 tons of waste per day. To be very honest, nothing much is being done. Whatever waste is generated, we collect those waste and we just take it to the landfill site. To produce electricity from this waste, the city government again had plans, this time with a Chinese company. We entered into an agreement with the Chinese company to resolve all these issues. Having said that, it would be door-to-door -door collection, the cleaning and sweeping of the streets and transporting the garbage to the landfill site and converting the required amount of garbage for the production of electricity or other energy-related projects. But unfortunately, that could not materialize because of one or the other reason. In the situation where we just have plans, plans, plans and no actual implementation, the alternatives definitely have to go a long way before they become a part of our energy mix. Now in this scenario, what can we, the general consumers, do about it? This is something to think about.